you're a person with a uterus and you're interested in keeping that uterus baby free. What are your options? What are their side effects? And how do they actually work? Number one is condoms. Simply put, a condom is a physical barrier, usually made out of latex, that covers a penis and collects the sperm that comes out of it so that it doesn't ever come into contact with the vagina. Condoms are pretty much your only option for protection against catching a sexually transmitted infection, or an STI, as they keep skin and fluid contact to a minimum. They're 98% effective at preventing pregnancy, but only if used properly and if they don't malfunction, which, as most of us know, is not a guarantee. Number two is the pill. The oral hormonal contraceptive pill, whew, mouthful, contains different combinations of synthetic hormones. Some contain only synthetic progestin, and this is sometimes called the mini pill, and some contain varying percentages of estrogen and progestin. Just as an aside, progesterone is what your body produces naturally, and progestin is a synthetic compound that's made in a lab to mimic natural progesterone's effects on your body. That distinction can be a little confusing sometimes, so just wanted to put that out there. Putting these synthetic hormones into your bloodstream by taking the pill effectively tricks your body into thinking that it's pregnant, as these hormones are naturally released by your body when you are actually pregnant. Estrogen stops your body from releasing any eggs at all, so there's nothing to fertilize. The progestin works to do the same thing, but also makes your uterine lining thinner and not as hospitable to an egg should one accidentally become fertilized, and thickens the mucus that covers your cervix to prevent any sperm from getting in, like the great wall of the vagina. This method is 99% effective at preventing pregnancy, but only if you're really good about being consistent with taking the pill every day, and preferably around the same time. And that's actually a lot harder than you might think. Some of the side effects can include mood alteration, weight gain, acne getting worse, acne getting better, and decrease in sex drive. But a lot of people start going on the pill for reasons outside of birth control. They may need help regulating their hormones for an issue like polycystic ovarian syndrome, or painful periods, migraines, or hormonal acne. It's really important to remember that the pill does not protect at all against any STIs. So if that's a concern for you, then you should always Always, 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 always use a condom. The shot, also known as the injection. This is just another method to deliver progestin into your body. Again, it prevents ovulation and makes it difficult for sperm to get past your cervix. The difference here is that you only have to get the injection every three months, as opposed to taking a pill every day. So with the pill, you're taking small amounts every day, and with the shot, you get a pretty hefty dose all at once. When it's received as recommended, the shot is 99% effective, but going longer than the recommended three months in between shots, or if you're unable to get in to see your doctor regularly, the effectiveness of it slips down to about 94%. Some of the side effects of the birth control shot are similar to those associated with the pill, like weight gain, change in sex drive, and mood change, but this method can also make your periods more irregular and can be accompanied by nausea, headaches, increased spotting, and sore boobs. It's important to mention that all hormonal birth controls slightly increase your risk of experiencing harmful blood clot issues, like deep vein thrombosis, because the hormones that help you not get pregnant are partially doing so by altering the way your uterine lining forms and sheds. You are at an even slightly higher risk on certain kinds of synthetic hormones, and yes, different brands use different kinds, especially if you are overweight, if you smoke, or if you have a family history of blood clotting issues. I know this sounds pretty scary and serious, but just talk to your doctor to make sure you're discussing all the risk factors before choosing the birth control method that's right for you. The implant is a rod about the size of a matchstick that is inserted under the skin of your upper arm and stays there, chilling out, releasing progestin. The implant can stay in for up to four years, is completely undetectable, and the same side effects that you might expect from the injection also apply here. In addition to those, you may experience some discomfort or irritation around the spot where it was put in, but only for a few days. The procedure to have it put in is very minor, usually pretty painless, and can be performed in a regular clinic with no recovery time necessary. The contraceptive ring is a soft, pliable ring that sits inside your vagina, below your cervix, and releases estrogen and progestin locally, right to the source, if you will. This means that lower dosages of the hormones are required because they don't need to circulate throughout your whole bloodstream in order to be effective. So in total, you are exposing your body to a lower concentration of synthetic hormones over time. You put the ring in yourself, and you take it out every 28 days for a few days to let your uterine lining shed before putting in a new one. When when used correctly, the ring is 99% effective, but it does have some unique side effects. Some users say they can feel it or their partner can feel it.
feel it during sex. The ring can fall out in some instances, which affects its effectiveness, and some users report a change in their vaginal discharge. The intrauterine device, or IUD, is a similar concept to the contraceptive ring, but instead of sitting in your vagina, it sits in your uterus, right above your cervix. It's a little T-shaped plastic device that releases hormones over time, doing all the rad things that estrogen and progestin do to prevent pregnancy. Because it sits inside your uterus, the IUD does need to be put in by a professional, and the insertion process may be uncomfortable or painful, especially for those of us who have never had children. This kind of IUD is good for anywhere between three and five years, and is immediately effective, so once it's put in, you've got peace of mind for a while. The hormonal IUD may help with painful periods, making them lighter and less intense, and IUDs are 99% effective, and complications are pretty rare. Yes, there is a long-term non-hormonal birth control option for those who can't or don't want to put synthetic hormones in their bodies. These kinds of IUDs are usually made out of copper, which slowly releases into the cervix and makes the cervical mucus impenetrable and toxic to sperm. The copper IUD is likely to make your periods heavier and longer, so if that's a concern for you, this one may not be the right fit. And again, insertion may be uncomfortable. But I'd really like to stress, don't be too freaked out by what you read on the internet. People who post about their experiences usually tend to be the ones who either had an amazing experience or a terrible one, and neither of those groups of people are representative of the average. Everybody's body is different, so don't get lost down a rabbit hole of someone else's story about how everything went totally wrong, because you will never know how it'll work for you until you try it. So there are a lot of things that go into choosing, getting, and using birth control that a lot of people may not think about. How expensive it is, is it covered by insurance, does it fit with your lifestyle, do you need to take it for a health issue besides preventing pregnancy? How does it interact with your personal body? There's a lot going on here, and it's a big responsibility, and some might even say burden. So you would think that making finding the right birth control for you as simple and accessible as possible would be a top priority in human health. Right? Everyone deserves to have control over whether or not they have children, and to feel in control of their sexual health, and it's not an easy thing. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope it helped some of you. There's so much to say about this issue, so I'm thinking of doing a birth control Q&A. If you have any questions about some of the more confusing or intricate aspects of how birth control works in your body, let me know on my Facebook page or my Twitter or on YouTube or on Instagram, because I would love to hear from you. Okay, bye. Ba, ba, da, ba, 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 ba.